all Packer fans, welcome to Packer Talk with Green with my special guest, Doug Paulo. Thank you, Doug, for coming to the show. We're going to talk about a great ending win over the, the season-ending game at Lambeau Field over the Buffalo Bills. And uh, Marv Levy and a, a task massacre, he got a penalty, and get, he's out of the game at a penalty pretty early for that. But anyway, look at the toe port here. Uh, total minutes, we got 32, and they got 28. First downs, they beat us by 7. We had 14, they had 21. Total yards, they beat us there by about 50. We had 270, they had 325. We don't know about Brett Favre, about uh, MVP thing. He had a great, he had, I guess the votes and ballots were in before le this weekend's game, so we don't know about that. Dorsey Levens didn't get the Jim Taylor single season record for rushing. He had about 40 to go, I think. But, but we had 1,000 yard receivers out of Mr. Uh, uh, Antonio Freeman, Mr. Robert Brooks, both 1,000 yards. That was very good. And uh, Darren Sharper, we're getting to his hit later on. And Ross Verba, the ro uh, rookie and the second year guy, are doing a great job. Our second and third uh, stringer did so so. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sonny or Cher Bono, he had a tough time. We're 13 and 3. On the other side, like I said, uh, Teeth Tasker, the special teams uh, pro bowler, he was career-ended penalty. He got kicked out of the game for roughing into the run into the umpire or whatever. They played tough, but not tough enough. Smith did he didn't really do much against Ross Verba, and they knew they do need Doug a revamping with the you know they they had to run up the four bowl uh, Super Bowls and stuff and getting old and stuff. So, but anyway, what do you want to talk about? It was a great win for us at Lambeau Field. I think that. Uh getting to be 13 and 3 for the second year in a row. This is a more challenging year. This is the year everybody plays you to their highest ability. So it's real nice to see that the Packers are staying on that 13 and 3 plateau. They're showing that they're the hottest team right now in the league defensively and offensively. Uh, the only thing that they probably could shore up from Saturday's game, and we'll talk about it later probably, is the second stringers and the backup quarterback situation. Yeah. 13-3 uh, is very good, isn't it? At well, us and the Forty Nineers are thirteen and three, but they have the home field advantage right. thing. Unless they get knocked off in the playoff, then we got it. But that's not a bad record, thirteen and three for uh, Coach Mike and staff two years in a row. And we won five in a row at the end of the season. The defense is peaking and running the ball pretty much. Except we didn't really run the ball effectively last week. But overall, the last mm -hmm. five weeks, Doug, we've been running the exactly. ball pretty well, and the defense really stepped up a little bit. Yeah, everything seems weeks. to be coming together. I'm still waiting for the special teams to break out with a touchdown. Although they did but get one off the guy. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, that's the first one. Last year we scored five touchdowns off the special teams. Okay. From from different, with mostly Desmond Howard with the returns and stuff. But we only had one. That was Latin, uh, Saturday morning. That's the only one we had. And myself, personally, I thought maybe the rule was a muff. I didn't, I didn't think that you could advance a muff, but that was my call. I don't know. Maybe the rules are interpreted by the referees. That's their right. job. They know All more right. about it than I do. But we started off, boom, seven, seven to nothing right away. So that's not bad. Special good. teams got involved right away. That was good to see. And then Tyrone the, Davis. Then the defense stops him again. We come back down and score another touchdown, make it 14 nothing right away. Uh, Buffalo reminds me a lot of the Dallas Cowboy team this year, sort of on a downhill slide. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, from they're, all those Super Bowls in the yeah, early 90s. Their history is pretty much done. They've got to revamp, like it says later on. You betcha. And, uh, how about Doris Levens now? He, he had 22 carries. He gave him enough uh, chances, Doug. 22 carries is, you know, he, oh, yeah. he only had about three yards of carry, and he's better, he has a better average than that. But they gave him plenty of time and enough carries to get that, that Jimmy Taylor single season record, whatever. But he just uh, didn't didn't come up upon uh, him a Saturday morning. I think that they you know they take him out I think in the third quarter or so. That they made a good decision there. You have to oh do yeah. that. You pretty much have the game in hand. Yeah, you know are, that's yeah, the one thing about injuries right. are very important. Uh, win the game. I was saying win the game and stay healthy Saturday. That was the two most important things we had to do. Stay healthy. I mean, the record's a record. If they bring him back next year, he's going to be looking like he'll be the starter. I th certainly think he's done a better job than. Uh, Bennett had done in that case with the yards per carry. Well, he's faster Bennett, and stronger and, and stuff like that. It'll be interesting to see how that situation pans out next year, but right now we've got to be looking to the playoffs, and it's good to have a running game this year going into the playoffs. And we've got a pretty good receiving core by that number up there with Mr. Freeman and Mr. Brooks, huh? First time ever, is that? 1,000 yes. yards for First both? time for the Packers, 78 years of Packers history, two receivers at 1,000 uh, yards or more catching. It's good to see Brooks back. Looks like Freeman's still the go-to guy. Yes. But uh, it's good to see that Favre is looking both ways. And uh, just shows that what a quality quarterback he is. And the tight ends still have caught enough balls, too, this year. So. Yeah, they caught a ball in the backs. And William Anderson in the backs, all the backfield. So, well, he really hasn't spread the ball around quite like last year. You know, last year, right. last year uh, 10 guys had 20 balls or uh, caught 20 passes or more. I don't know what it is this year yet. Yeah, we'll find out. But the balls basically have been going to Freeman and Brooks and mm -hmm. uh, a few. Uh, uh, Dorsey Lemons has got good hands on the backfield and William Anderson. But basically, and Chewy gets once in a while. But basically, they're... The spreading around isn't, isn't what it was last year, but very effective though. Right. And downfield, we haven't went downfield a lot either, but, but uh, they spread the ball out, maybe medium range passes and take it from there. Once in a while, it'll go down deep and stuff. But 
How about, uh, we can't say enough about Mr. Darren Sharper. We'll get into that. What a, yeah, what a, a hit he did on that, uh, that guy downfield. He didn't see him coming. And Mr. Ross, forever. did he do a good job at Mr. Bruce Smith, the, the 10 time or 12 time second leading sacker in the NFL history or something? You didn't hear Bruce Smith's name mentioned very much Saturday, so that just tells you Verba's doing a good job. And when Sharper hit Lonnie Johnson, Lonnie Johnson will be looking straight at ahead next time he does that play, but uh, there's a tight end that Sharper hit. Um, I gotta say, though, the offensive line, it's too bad we didn't get anybody in the Pro Bowl. I really thought one or two of the guys deserved that, but they're doing a good job this year. Yes, they are. Um, they seem to be coming together, too. I just can't see this team uh, cashing it in now. They're just, oh, no. they're just on a roll, uh, and uh, it's good to see. This is the time to be on, on the roll. We don't, like last year, we finished up with five. Now we got we finished up the season with five. Now, looking at the, okay, now we look at the Brett Favre thing, okay, the MVP thing. Now, when the season started, we knew, uh, myself personally, we know that I, I figured that Brett Favre wouldn't have no 38 or 39 or 40 yard mm -hmm. uh, touchdown passes. I thought with the running game excelling at, at the end of last year and maybe and, and doing a better job running the ball, Doug, that his touchdown passes would be down, and they were down. Ran the ball effective, more effectively this year than in the past, and so that his touchdown things. That's not saying that Brett Favre could have thrown them. Oh, yeah. But it is, running the ball is very important for any NFL team, and we ran it pretty effectively. Would he end up with about 33, 34? Oh, touchdown. 35 touchdowns. 35 passes. touchdowns. Which isn't too bad. He no. led, led the league in that again. I think when you're looking at a valuable player, they all say, uh, is it the guy who's most valuable to his team to win? And definitely Brett's, you know, without Brett, you could see what kind of situation our team's in. Bono didn't have too good of a game on Saturday. And uh, I definitely can't think of another guy other than maybe Barry Sanders. But well, they are playing to the caliber that our team is. And that's what you got to look at. And Barry Sanders is probably a sentimental favorite, mm -hmm. you know. Because he, he is really a super nice guy off the field. He don't mm -hmm. slam the ball. He don't take off his helmet and do all this kind of stuff. He just gives the ball to the referee and walks away and, and, and does a great job. And he's, he's, he's good for football, Barry Sanders is. Right. Uh, and I think we talked about a second, third string. Uh, Kaburski is doing okay on the defensive side of the ball. And Darius Hall and, and, uh, and uh, Jermaine Smith does okay once in a while. But we've been arresting the Gravedigger, which mm -hmm. is somewhat right. of a very important part of the run defense. Now he's been, he will be all about four weeks approximately, I think, with the, or so. So he should be well rested up to, um, to take this team to the Super Bowl again with that run stop defense. Uh, he really does a good job at that, don't he? I would say, uh, you know, him and Reggie both have been resting, and, and I would think that they come to this playoff game, barring any injuries in, in the games coming up, they should be playing at their peak performance. Even Reggie had some sacks at the end of the. Well, he's got 11 and a half. Didn't he 11 or 11? I think he leads the mm -hmm. team. He had 11 sacks this year. So it's good to see him come on towards the end of the year and okay. get some of those. Let's look at the other set of ball. Okay, now we'll talk about Mr. Uh, Steve Tasker. Okay. Now, unfortunately, we don't know. I thought that was a muff, and you can't advance a muff. And then you come off the sidelines and hit the referee. Or bump. You're not supposed to bump the referee, you know, from ticky-tacky kind of call sometimes, but you're not supposed to do it, and I guess. What a way to end a, a brilliant career. You know, unfortunately, he got kicked out of the game on that play, and we didn't see him anymore. He's done playing now. It would have been interesting to see if he could have, uh, I think he would have played with more emotion, you know, had he been in that game longer and maybe, it, but, you know, the guy's had a good career, it's too bad it had to end on that note, but, you know, you can't, the rules are rules, can't, can't be bumping the refs. Uh, one thing, though, uh, that he probably wish he would have known, is he, he probably came down there after the refs thinking it hit him when it actually hit a teammate of his, so, right. but what you going to do? Yeah, and it set us up pretty good with that 7 nothing right away. I, uh would say, you know, Buffalo hung in there, although it was 21-0. You got to give them some yeah. credit for coming back. Um, I do, uh, you know, question that one call on Steve Bono, him fumbling. I thought he was down. But what you, you know, what you're going to do on that, it's already, the game's pretty well in hand already, but you don't like to see turnovers. And I know Holmgren doesn't at well, any and, point in the game. And penalties, too. I think we have, what do we have, uh, 13? Something like 13 or 15 penalties. Very, very many, too many penalties for Coach Mike Stapp. He's not, he don't like that. So he likes a clean game and, We've had a we had our share of uh, so-called boo-boos this past Saturday morning, you know, holdings and whatnots, right. and and some of them caused the, with the defensive penalties. You know, the ball maybe should have was over overthrown, couldn't have been caught, and yet they throw the flag and and stuff. You know, but the rule is if it really can't be caught, then it really should be right. no uh, penalty on it. But you know, we got maybe a couple against us, but I don't care. We still won the game. We're such a great team, Doug, that we can overcome. Well, 13 penalties is really quite, quite a, too many for us, but mm -hmm. we're a great team. We can afford a fuel. I mean, that doesn't mean we have to have 13 or 15 penalties every week. But we can, we can afford I mean, I can't uh, remember fuel. the last time the Packers had in the teens on penalties. Yeah. Probably the only time yeah. this year, but yeah. um, 
a home run will have him working again. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I don't think whoever we play in that first round, I really feel that that should be a game that we should come away with. Okay, the scenario is for the uh, we got uh, the scenario is for the playoff game for the Green Bay Packers. If the New York New York Giants host Minnesota, if the Giants win Minnesota, uh, if the Giants win, Giants come up to Lambeau Field. If the Giants lose, we have the winner of the Detroit Lions Tampa Bay Buccaneer game. Correct. That's basically the the, the format that we have. Well, and we got two weeks to worry about it. We're not yet, we're not going to worry about it. But that's right. basically who, that's the situation that we're in with that. Uh, it was uh, it was a great season. 13 and 3. I don't think coach will get coach of the year. That's one thing that Coach Mike hasn't yeah. had yet is a coach of the year. I think you uh, see too many teams. Uh, that well, yeah, have. you had the Parcells yeah. turn it around mm -hmm. thing, and uh, Mariucci rookie coach got you know that sort of thing, and and some other coaches. So, but uh, and Dungey did it. You know, he did, right. maybe he's out there a little bit on the ballot for coach of the year. Uh, so I don't know about. I don't. The Packers are not worried about the Pro Bowl. I don't think Coach Holmgren. It's a nice thing to have a coach of the year and all that kind of stuff, all that accolades and stuff. But the bottom line is San Diego. Right. And that's where we're striving for. We're healthy. Uh, we've got the best quarterback in the National Football League. Our defense is prime time right now. Our defensive backs are picking up a lot of balls. They're doing really well. They're hitting well. Our offensive line is working. They're opening up the holes for a ground game, protecting Brett Favre. Uh, the receivers are catching. Freeman is really catching on the ball. And he's catching everything now. He is catching everything right now, Antonio. The whole the whole team sort of after that Colt loss, they just sort of come together. Everybody's is stepping it up on all sides of the ball. Um, offensive line, like you said, I, I can't remember the last time. I think the offensive line's done such as good a job. It seems Brett Favre, although he does have the tendency to scramble anyway, oh. it seems like he has enough time back there. How about that little well. little juke move? One guy came at him, stepped aside. Two yeah. other guys came, stepped aside, and did it. And, then, and then some of the players, yeah. the Packer players, were just standing there waiting yeah. and, 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 and a little bit of lap, a little bit, and, 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 he, got, and he got about an eight-yard pass on a first down to Chewy for that. But right. Brett Favre is really something else, isn't he? I tell you, the, the fans here in Wisconsin have been waiting. A lot, too many years for this, and I just hope that this can stay for many years to well, come. For a while, yes. You bet. Uh, now, what else would you like to talk about? Uh, uh, Dorsey Levin's. Uh, Dorsey Levin's thing. As far as uh, you know, he catches the ball coming out of the backfield. That's just an additional bonus with him. Uh, you can't give enough credit to Henderson, who I thought should have made the Pro Bowl. Speaking of Henderson, I think Mr. Um, uh, William Henderson should carry the ball a few more times. What do you think? He uh, made the first down he, in a short yardage play he should on Saturday. Not, William Henderson's got the talent and the capability, Doug, not mm -hmm. just to be third and short, fourth and short, the goal line thing. He's very good hands with the screen yeah. pass is very effective oh, with yeah. William. Uh, uh, pass out the ball. flat is very good for him, and is very good. He's very a good, lead, a very excellent lead blocker. He really, he can really smack a linebacker, can't he? By them using him more, and it would be nice to see because it would be probably a surprise to a lot of teams. They don't. Some games he catches five, six balls, but sometimes he doesn't catch one. You right. know. So it'd be good to see him them use the, him more. Um, I don't know what Holmgren's got in the script as far as uh, you know. He did a he did a reverse on Saturday. I've yeah. seen that all year, but um, we'll have to see what he's got coming. Well, up. One thing about the Packers, we we know as we watch them with the talent we have, and we really don't have to do a lot of trickery, Doug. Right. The Packers are pretty much you know let Rob, let Brett Far Brett take care of whatever he does back there, and basically same front. Offensive scheme, not too much trickery, because you don't. If you're a great football team, you can rely on talent and your plays to get you the first downs and the third down conversions and the fourth down conversions into the end zone. And same, same on the. Fritz Schirmer's got that defense really going. The, the, I would want, I would not want to be an offensive coordinator trying to figure out what Fritz is throwing at you, because because he hides it. He very a lot of variables, a lot of different people come from all different fronts, different spots in the field, delayed blitzes and. He's got that defense really doing well right now, and they're, they, they're really doing well. They were rated like in the 20s, yeah, and now they're in bad. the top 10. Yeah, they're in so the top 10 now. Um, any uh, preferences on who you see coming through the AFC at all? Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, okay, Denver doesn't seem to have the De Denver doesn't seem to have the toughness in December. They have a tough time with December games. Now, I guess the AFC matchups are. Uh, Denver host Jacksonville. Right. Of course, last year everybody knows Jacksonville will be Denver out there, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Steelers are a buy. They get they get a buy. Kansas City get the first round buy, home field thing. And I guess the Monday night game tonight, New England Patriots. Whoever wins is the whole is uh, holds the they play host right. to the same team. So New England wins, they host Miami, and vice versa. So, but my 
my thought on who uh, probably Kansas City is playing really well. See, Pittsburgh, I thought was playing well, but they they lost yesterday. What, no, were they playing for anything much? No, I know Bettis didn't play. No, Bettis didn't play. No, I don't know. Well, you'd want to play. I don't know what exactly what they were playing for. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they would have won. If maybe if they would have won and, and Denver would have lost, they would have had a home. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. We don't know what was on. But well, it really surprised me. New England, if, if they win tonight, which I think they will, uh, I think they'll be tough, although they haven't shown it. They showed it at the beginning of the year, and then the Packers played them, they sort of fell in the tank. But I really thought New England would be back this year. Um, but we'll have to see, I guess. A new coach over there. Yeah. A new coach right. over there. And it's got something to do with stuff. it. And uh, stuff. But, but we're such a talented team. Great leadership, great coaching staff. Uh, we're healthy, and we're on a roll. There's really no reason why that we can't end up winning the championship in San Diego in about what's well, five weeks approximately from yesterday or something. Right. So, uh, who do you think is going to make? Who do you think might give us that challenge out there? Well, I tell you, um, if uh, Pittsburgh in the NFC. Oh, in, in the NFC. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. Who do you think is going to? Well, you, I, think, I you, you think the 49ers are going to win? I you think the 49ers might be knocked off in the first game? Because if, if the 49ers get knocked off, we have two games at Lambeau, so we'll right. see what happens there. I take a look at all those teams, it, even the, like Tampa Bay, Detroit, Minnesota. And I just even watched them play yesterday, just so, you know, still inconsistent on sides of the ball. Um, I can't see any of those three challenging us. The Giants have a good defense. They could keep it low scoring. But no quarterback. You know, San Francisco is the only one that's going to give you any kind of challenge. But after watching how they played last night, although they didn't have the starters in, you still... You shouldn't get waxed 38 to 9. Whatever it was, yeah. Whatever it was, and uh, expect to yeah. go to the Super Bowl. Peking, you don't want to, you don't want to take a smack like that, mm -hmm. uh, peaking and getting ready for the playoffs. Well, then Jerry Rice gets hurt again, so they won't have that weapon anymore. Not that they needed him most of the year; they won almost all their games. Right, without, without him, yeah. But uh, you know, I see it. I, I see it similar to a couple of years ago. Packers went down to 49er land and just kicked some butt. We have, That's what we're gonna have to do. Our again. quarterback is is uh, he took a shot, but he bounced back. Mr. Brett Favre, yeah. I think Doug. Likes to get a bounce around a little bit. He likes to get slapped upside the head a little bit and, and wakes him up. That's the way he is. That's right. the way he's been for all his uh, pro career so far. He likes getting dinged up a little bit and, and shook up a little bit. He is strong. He, Brett Favre is a strong quarterback. He's not. He's not going to go down with a with a little a little ta one arm tackle. You're not going to tackle Brett Favre. So he's the strongest quarterback and the healthiest quarterback going right now in the playoffs. He's like the most starts in a row for us. Yeah, he's the think. strongest and the healthiest quarterback going on right now. And, in the NFL right now, in the playoffs, right. you know, Young is you can, Young is somewhat, he's dinged up. He gets up kind of gingerly. You know, he's been smacked around a lot of mm -hmm. lot of times. Uh, uh, the guy from Minnesota, their quarterback Mitchell's not very. He's Barry Sanders helps him out more than you know than they need. Barry, Mitchell's not that all good of a quarterback. And Trent Dilfer, I, I can't believe he's, he's going to he's, going, he's going to Pro Bowl. <laughs> so I don't know. He's not. He's, you know, but I Red Favre is the best in the NFC right now. I, I don't see anybody challenging the Packers that first game. I really tell you, I think the biggest challenge is going to come out of the AFC. I think there's two or three teams that are pretty okay. close to the caliber, but Kansas City, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, and, and Denver if they get Terrell Davis back. Uh, Jacksonville has not impressed me. Miami and New England, although I'd like to see New England do good, and Miami's been in the tank all year. So uh, I really see Kansas City or Pittsburgh coming out of there. Probably Pittsburgh. Kansas City, it seems, whenever they have a good season, they always have trouble winning the big game. So uh, I think Pittsburgh will be back, and you'll see uh, Jerome Bettis, Dorsey Levin show in the Super Bowl would be That would be nice. Um, that would be an in interesting matchup, uh, Green Bay and Pittsburgh. I think so. And be lot, I think there would be more Packer fans out there than Pittsburgh. Oh, but anyway, yeah. so. <laughs> uh, uh, what else? Uh, we well, Buffalo, you say, you know, a lot of revamping. I think that... Uh, they're going to have to be looking. You know, Thermos Thomas is getting old, and Bruce Smith is getting old, and Jim Kelly, you know, he wants to come back. But for well, somebody speaking else. about, how about, we'll get, in the, we'll get about Mr. Bryce Pop a little bit. What do you mm -hmm. think about maybe Bryce Pop maybe has a thought? I don't know how much thought process is going into maybe Bryce coming back to Green Bay. He should have never left. That's his biggest mistake. Sorry, Bryce, you should have never left. But what do you think about that? I think maybe. Yeah, I think guys like him. Possibly he might come back or something, or. You know, I haven't seen his numbers this last year, but I know the oh, first. Year, down. I know the first year he left the Packers, he had a real good year with Buffalo. It'd be it would be nice to see him come back. He's going to have to take probably less money, because we got to dole out some money to a lot of the other guys. Evans and Evans, Evans and Evans this year. You know, you, you, there's a lot of guys like that. Remember Jackie Harris had good years here. He goes to Tampa Bay. Now they're in the playoffs, but he hasn't been amounting to anything. So no. it's just a system makes players good. This type of system that Holmgren has. And Shermer has going for this offense. Yeah, he was kind of irate on that one p penalty by uh, the Steve Bono uh, mm -hmm. fumble down or not, but he's kind of he was kind of irate. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, on that. You know, I've seen the referee throw his uh, puck or whatever you want to call it, the little mm -hmm. chip for and mark the ball, which I would, I thought was a dead ball. You oh, know, yeah. he was down sort of thing, but nothing happened. No. And uh, in a situation like that, don't you think the referees maybe should? Con it seems like the referees are always talking about everything else. Every other penalty, they're always two or three are in a huddle talking. There's nobody even talked to one another about it or that, not, that or nothing. That did surprise me. I thought, you know, he had rolled over halfway before the ball came out of his arm. If that's the one you're talking about yeah. where Bono fumbled. Yeah. And uh, they raced it 70 yards back for to the five-yard line. Um, that's another reason, you know, instant replay, maybe that isn't to solve it, but maybe there's something where you can get a couple refs to at least, you know. Talk a little yeah, bit. Yeah, talk or view some kind of tape. It doesn't have to be, you know, just so they look. You yeah, have, yeah. have another opinion on it. Absolutely. Uh, but you got to keep the game going, too. Otherwise, yeah. it just gets to be too too long. Okay. How uh, about Ross Verba? We'll get on I like talking about Ross Verba. Okay. He sure has a tenacity, don't he? he and the bulldogishness and the meanness streak in his back or in his front or wherever you want to put it. He seems to be able he, to. He likes, he likes the pressure. He likes big yeah. games. He likes all pro people lining against him. He likes the mud and the, and the mud and the dirt and the rain and the cold and the slop and, <laughs> and being physical and everything else, don't he? Have you ever noticed him? Every game I've watched him play, he seems to really peeve off the other guy across from him, and he always seems to get a penalty on that guy. He's able to get guys uh, to break down mentally and commit silly, you know, personal fouls or whatever. And uh, but you know, not to mention how great of a blocker he has been. I don't know if he's gotten many penalties. I know he had one on s Saturday, but he's a lot better than the guy that they had in there before. And John Michaels has sort of scared me, that protecting Brett Favre on that side. Brett is very I, confident uh, with the mm -hmm. Ross over Yes, he is. And I think Ross comes with the attitude that, that helps Brett to be confident. you really got to have an attitude sometimes to play certain positions of football. And, and uh, Michael seems a little soft at times. Uh, I, even in his interviews, I've noticed, you know, between him and Verba, that yeah. it's like night and day. And sometimes there are personalities which you need to help yourself get over the top. You've got to be nasty a little bit in the offensive line. A lot of the game's mental, and, you know, that's that's the part that I don't think Verba has no problem with at all. Oh, no, he, he's, so. he's ready to play every game, every down. <laughs> and he's healthy, he's big and strong, and he's young, and he's learning, and he's uh, he's going to be uh, very good for a long time to come. I don't come. know how many of you people out there, when you remember his name being mentioned at the end of the first round last year, threw your, you, you, threw yeah. your books out the window, but yeah, yeah. this guy was a good, legitimate pick. Yeah. They probably recognized the need because Michael wasn't living up to expectations. And that's good that they did draft him. Of course, yeah, he was the last pick in the round. He was the last pick in the first round. And he 11 day hold out, so him and coach didn't get on a didn't get off on a, a very good note. But I think Coach Mike and and Ron Wolf. I think they realized what they got over there with Mr. Ross. I think they they realized what they we're talking about since Coach Mike has been there and Ron Wolf. I think there's only been about 20 guys that they have drafted that they have let go. Okay. You know, from and I wasn't from, aware of, but yeah, yeah I approximately. I don't know exactly, but yeah. basically, 90% or more of the players that they draft, they have kept on that on that roster. You know, and which is yeah. really good. You know, you get a system, you get these people working and believe in your system. Stay, you know, and just work with the system, believe in the system, and and, and, and take the eye out of the team, no eye in team, and work for one common goal, which is San Diego, and that's where the Packers are going to be going again. Is there any uh, thoughts you have on uh, sort of after the Super Bowl? Um, free agents that are a must sign for the well, okay. Dor okay, we don't know. Dorsey Evans is going to want probably, I guess, the top guys get the top five, mm -hmm. whatever it is. You know, you get the, you get, you know, Dorsey Evans is going to demand a lot of money. He's going to get him. I hope they pay him. Doug Evans is going to have to be signed. Uh, Brooks and the way Brooks and Freeman are working together as a tandem, I can't, you cannot, I would not think that uh, Brooks and or Fre Freeman will be separated. I think they're going to stay. Both of those are free agents this year also. I think so. Okay. So they're probably, they probably did both have. To, so they had 13 of them, 12 or 13 free agency, one side or the other, that had to be somewhat signed and taken care of. But probably there's a, they're all going to be important. But free, uh, Doris Evans is going to be important. Doug Evans is going to be very important, and the Brooks and, and Freeman are going to be very important, and stuff like this. So uh, we don't know. The salary cap is going to increase by three or four million dollars per team. We don't know exactly what's going to go on, but. Uh, Mike Reinfeld, Coach, uh, Coach Mike uh, Holmgren, and Ron Wolf, and Bob Harlan, and who's ever in charge of this stuff. The eight, you know, as they say, the dynasties are hard to keep, you know, because people leaving for the free agency does mess up teams. You know, they right. leave and go and come and stay, and, and they, they go on all the time. But I think the Green Bay Packers, Doug, have a chance here to hang around in a top echelon of the National Football League for a while. If, so, so if these players would rather have a ring, and all that stuff that comes with the ring and winning seasons, maybe these guys 
Maybe there it will be a change in the National Football League set by presidents by the Green Bay Packers, and maybe these guys will stay at Lambeau. You know, when Lombardi was there, these players stayed together for like nine or ten. They stayed. Right. I mean, you had a couple people leaving, but basically, the only reason, the only way a dynasty is going to happen in the NFL today is if these people stay together for years. And hopefully, we can work it out. Maybe they'll take less money and well, stuff and, no, and whatever. Well, you got guys too, like Reggie White may retire. That's saving a few yeah, million. save a few bucks there. Mm -hmm. You yes. see him playing after this year? Close. Well, he had a. No, depends on his back. Yeah. He had, he's got 11 sacks. <laughs> He, he, you know, it's been a long time since he had 11. He, I think it's been three years since he had double, okay. double digit sacks. So you can't tell that he is 30. I think he just turned 36 or yeah, 37. Last Friday, he yeah, 36. 36. Yeah. So he's really playing well for his age. So we don't know. Maybe he'll play uh, sparingly, situational stuff, but maybe he'll play for another one. It'd be good so, to see him play for one more year. I you think. know, uh, Gabe Wilkins is doing. How about Gabe Wilkins over there doing for John Jones? This year. He's doing pretty good oh over yeah. there. Yeah, no is scoring out of him this year too. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> uh, Santana Dotson is yeah. very steady in the middle. That's another guy I thought should have made the Pro Bowl. Santana yes, Dotson, he's doing a very good job. Uh, People have sacks this year. Oh, I don't know. He's maybe a four. Okay. I mean, he doesn't have. Still, though, he's been doing a good job. Well, he put pressure on quarterback yeah. and and put. Well, that's what his job. When he got him out of Tampa Bay, his job was Doug to put pressure up the center. You know, sure. from a straight, the straight line is from from point A to point B is straight, and that's what they basically got Santana Dotson for. He, he's becoming a very good run stopper, along with a pass, uh, uh, pass. What do you call it? Pass, uh, pass Defender. defense or uh, <laughs> pressure on the quarterback. Right. So uh, they're doing pretty well as a unit there, the defensive front. Okay. In the line, how about Mr. Seth Joyner? No, no, he's becoming a pretty good ball player. Yeah, I, I Saturday I was impressed. You know, with the. Uh, the fact the Packers had three interceptions. You know, yes. They haven't had a lot of them this year, but it's good to see them starting to get some turnovers. Seth Joyner, I almost thought he had one. Or he should have. Yeah. The other yeah. week he should have had yeah. one. Um, pressure on the, on the opposing quarterback. The Packers seem to be blitzing a little more this year than they have been. Excuse me, that's all we got left is one minute? Yep. Okay, we got to... Okay, we don't really can't pick a score, but we got to say hi to some people. We've got to wrap. I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. I didn't pay attention to the cards, but go ahead and say hi to some folks out there, Doug. I'm going to say hi to my wife, Kathy, for uh, putting up with me. Um, she'll get a good Christmas gift this year. I'm going to say hi to the Dart Ball nice team. Nice Packer leather jacket. Yeah, there you go. So, okay. And <laughs> like, say hi to the Dart Ball team. Yeah, I'd like to say hi to the Dart Ball team. Uh, again, Mark Potter didn't had the opportunity to come on the show and forgot to do so. Well, I just, I'd like to <laughs> uh, thank my sponsors, Ratchet and Debs, Coca Cola, and Audio Plus. And we're going to say it with me, P-A-C-K-E-R-S. Thanks for coming, Doug. Yeah, you betcha, Green. Go Pack, and uh, we got to rest this week, and um, we'll see what happens. And I didn't pay attention to the cards very much.